Hi you guys, welcome back to Meaningful Motivations with Tracy Erickson. And of course, if you are new to this channel, welcome. My name is Tracy Erickson, and in this video, I'm going to talk about the journaling process and how you can use journaling for personal growth and to even help you to process your emotions and improve your mental health. So stay tuned. I have been practicing journaling for over 20 years now. So I have quite a bit of experience with the process of journaling and also how you can use journaling to set goals for yourself, to help yourself to understand situations and events that go on in your life, and also to help you understand and process your emotions as you move through different life events and stages. There are so many benefits to taking up the practice of journaling. So I wanted to spend some time today to tell you guys all about the benefits of journaling and how you too can begin your own journaling practice to improve your life. I know we've all experienced moments in our lives where our thoughts become a little overwhelming, especially when you don't know how to express them properly, or if you feel as though you don't have someone trusted to share your thoughts with about particular people or situations. So one great benefit of journaling is that journaling helps you to clarify your thoughts. So instead of your thoughts simply bouncing around in your mind over and over again without any clarity given, when you take time to actually write out those thoughts, first of all, it's it's a way to let them move out of you because those thoughts, instead of being stuck in your head, are now coming through onto the page. And... As you write out your thoughts, it begins to help you to clarify those thoughts. You start to understand why you might have been thinking in particular ways or why a particular thought continues to bounce around in your mind. So journaling is definitely, first and foremost, a good practice to simply gain clarity in whatever situation you need clarity in. And when used regularly, journaling can also help you to develop creativity and help you to expand the ways that you think, creatively speaking. Journaling can also help you to process your emotions because similar to when you have thoughts bouncing around in your mind with no way to be expressed, your emotions can work Similarly, where you begin to kind of feel blocked up emotionally if you have no way to express them or to process your emotions. So by writing out the way that you are feeling about things can help to give expression to those emotions, which also helps you to understand, again, why you are feeling the way you're feeling about certain people or situations in your life. I even found this article on webmd.com that is called Mental Health Benefits of Journaling. And within that article, it points out that journaling can reduce anxiety. And there was a study where researchers found that those who had different medical conditions and anxiety who wrote 15 minutes, three days a week, over a 12-week period, had increased feelings of well-being and fewer depressive symptoms after only one month of journaling. Journaling also helps with brooding. So writing about an emotional event can help you break away from the non-stop cycle of obsessively thinking and brooding over what happens. It can also create awareness. 
So writing your feelings about the difficult situations in life can help you to understand them better. The act of putting an experience into words and structure allows you to form new perceptions about events. Journaling can also regulate your emotions. It says here that brain scans of people who wrote about their feelings showed that they were able to control their emotions better than those who wrote about a neutral experience. This study also found that writing about feelings in an abstract way was more calming than writing vividly. And journaling can also encourage you to open up. Writing privately about a stressful event could encourage some to reach out for social support. And this can help with your emotional healing as well. So beyond just clarifying your thinking and even helping with your emotional well-being, journaling is also good for your mental health. In addition to helping you to clarify your thinking and to cope with difficult emotions, journaling can also improve your mood and reduce stress. According to Google, there are tons of benefits of journaling for mental health, which includes stress management, help make better decisions, goal setting, boosting creativity, immune system support, relieves depression, enhances critical thinking skills, improves mental health, self-awareness, calms anxiety, treats anxiety symptoms, it enhances your mood, it helps you reflect on progress, boosts your memory and problem solving, improves self-esteem and emotional expression. It helps you to cope with trauma and grief and achieving your goals, identifying patterns, reframing negative thoughts, encourages self-confidence, and it helps to improve your mindfulness. The first step to start journaling is just to start journaling. Do not worry about being perfect or writing the perfect story. This is not about writing a story. What you are doing is simply giving your thoughts and emotion expression. So a great way to start a journaling practice if you're not sure where to start is just by sitting a, setting a timer for about 10 minutes and just doing a stream of consciousness writing until the timer goes off. So what I like to do is set a timer and then just start writing anything that is in my mind for the next 10 minutes without letting my pen stop writing. You can use whatever method of writing that works for you. So even if you're not setting a timer and doing a stream of consciousness writing, you can simply sit down and write about your day or about how your week has been going. Just write about something, anything. And as you begin to write, the more that the words will continue to just flow out of you from there. Even if you don't want to use a pen and paper for your journaling, you can use an app on your phone or tablet or laptop, and you can type it out if you don't want to write it out. So it really doesn't matter what method you choose for journaling. What matters is to actually take the time to sit down and just let the words come out of you. And another tip for if you are beginning on this journaling journey would be to actually set aside a time and a space for your journaling practice. So instead of just not knowing when or where you're going to do this, it's important to actually carve out time and sometimes even a space for you to be sitting in quiet and stillness and just giving yourself the time and space that you need to really let your journaling practice be effective because you don't want to rush these things. You want to give yourself time to make it a meaningful and a mindful experience. To make your journaling practice the most effective that it can be, it's going to be important for you to write in the present tense. So talk about how you feel right now and what's going on in your thinking and your emotions right now. 
It's also important that you give yourself to the freedom to write about anything you want to write about. Whatever you feel needs to be expressed. Just feel free to express it. And another good tip for effective journaling as well is to be consistent. So if you want to write every day, make sure that you write in your journal every day. And if you just want to commit to a few times a week, that's okay too. Because remember, in that study on the WebMD article, it states that those participants were only writing for 15 minutes on three days a week. And their mental health improved within a month. My final tip for effective journaling is that when you are writing in your journal, make sure that you are very specific about your thoughts and your feelings about things. Because one of the major things I love about my journaling practice is the ability to be able to look back at my thoughts and my feelings about situations in my life. But the more specific that I write about it, then the more I can understand how I was thinking and how I was feeling back then. And then that helps me to understand myself in the present moment or how my thoughts and attitudes change over time. So it's important to just be very specific if you're writing about a specific feeling or situation or event. Well, that about wraps it up for this video. So if you like this video, be sure to click that like button. And of course, if you're a viewer but not yet a subscriber, I would love for you to click subscribe down below. And once you have subscribed, you can turn on the notifications bell if you would like to be notified each and every time I upload a new video. Thank you guys so much for watching and spending your time with me. I love you. And I'll see you next time. Bye.